Welcome into the video. I am your tech guide, Wayne. Today I'm bringing you part three to our Samsung Galaxy A14 for Beginners series. Um, so much great feedback given in the first two videos and great comments and you know, you guys, I want you to know I'm really committed to helping you guys learn your phone and I saw a lot of things in the comments of, hey, thank you so much. Could you cover this in the next video? And so I'm back and I wanna cover some of the specific things you guys called out in the comments and show you guys some other really great things I think it will enhance your experience using this phone. Now, if you haven't already noticed this, I covered this uh, in a different video. It's a tips and tricks video. Um, if you notice how the screen keeps going dim and that's so frustrating, I'm gonna show you how to tweak that in the settings as well so you don't have to worry about your screen going dim so fast. But I wanna give you just a quick summary of what I'm gonna cover in this video. I wanna just set the right expectation and feel free to stick around for as long as it's helpful for you to continue to learn your phone. I'm gonna go over uh, how to take notes. What's a great note app to use? How to download it, how to take notes. I wanna show you how to use your emails. I realized that in the first video I showed you how to sign into your email and then I didn't show you how to use the app. So we will go over how to navigate your emails. Then I'll go over how to set alarms. We'll go over setting calendar appointments as well. We'll go over how to set up your voicemail so you can check those calls that are coming in. And finally, we'll end with how to connect to a Bluetooth speaker. Uh, so that'll be the rundown of the video today. If you find any section of this video helpful, um, please hit that like button down below. That's how this video gets shared to more people and it just you know, continue to be used as a guide and a tool to help new learners with using this phone. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's talk about notes. Now, there is no note app that comes on the phone. So what you'll need to do is go to the Play Store. Now in the first video I showed you how to get into the Play Store and how to navigate it. So I'm not gonna do a lot of recap on that. If you still have questions on how to use the Play Store, check out video one here. And that's where I go over kind of how to use the Play Store. But we're in here. We're gonna tap on this little search box at the top here. And I want you to type in Google Keep. This is one of the best note-taking apps, and I've been using it for almost 10 years. Now, it's a little yellow post-it note icon. You're gonna simply tap on the blue install button to the right, give it a couple of seconds to download, and then we're gonna just do a basic walkthrough of how to use this app. It's a great app that you can just jot down any important notes that you have, and it also will sync with your computer. So on your computer, um, if you go to Keep, google.com you'll be able to access all of these notes right from your uh, computer at home or even a tablet all you need is a web browser that has access to the internet to be able to access your notes okay let's tap on our open button here let's open up the app we're going to just tap get started we're going to hit continue it's going to ask you if it can send you uh, any notes notifications we'll hit allow and from there you'll simply tap on this little plus in the bottom right corner to open and, and start a new note. From here, you can simply type what you wanna say, you know, groceries, and create a grocery list if you want to. Now, uh, right now I'm in the body of the notes. I would encourage you before you start typing in this section, tap where it says title and type, you know, title your note That'll make it easier to find it as you're going through your list of notes. So I'm gonna type uh, grocery list here. And always good to date it because you're gonna have multiple grocery lists. So let's put 11 and 18. And now we can tap in this section and we can begin to type different things you wanna add to our list. Now I wanna show you a great shortcut. On your keyboard, there is gonna be a little microphone. You should see it right here. And if you tap on that microphone, instead of you having to type out your list, you can simply say the list. Okay, let's hit skip. It's gonna ask you to give it permission. There we go. We're gonna tap one more time. Eggs, milk, cheese, butter. So just that easy, I can just have those items populate on my list. And here's another cool trick. 
if you tap on this little plus in the left corner and you go down to check boxes, you can turn each of those items into its own checkbox. And now I'm simply going to tap right in between each word. So eggs, I just want to tap in the middle there and I'm going to hit this little enter in the bottom right corner and that's going to make that its own item. And I'm going to do that for each one. I'm just going to tap right between the words, hit the enter button. And now I have a grocery list. And as I'm at the store, I can simply check the box and that's going to move it off of my list. So this is one way and this is one way to use the note app. And this is how I use it pretty often. Now, guess what? I want to keep this list here and I want to go back to it later. No problem. I'm going to hit the arrow in the upper left corner to move away from that note. Now, if I want to find it later, I just simply need to swipe up and look for my list. And there it is. Grocery list 1118. Now, if I tap on that list, guess what? I can do a few more things. Maybe this is a list you'd like to add to throughout the day before you actually go to the grocery store. So in that case, you want to pin this note. So now it's always going to show up at the very top of the app. If I hit the arrow in the upper left corner, the back button, now my list is going to show up at the very top of my notes section and I'll always be able to find it right up here. I'm going to tap on it again. One other thing, you can assign a color to this note. You can make it yellow, for example. So when you go out of it, it'll show up as a yellow list and you may want to categorize your notes with different colors. So that's just a basic rundown of this app. It does a lot. It does a lot, but these are the, the basic things I wanted to show you. Um, in fact, let me show you one last thing that I think will be helpful. Let's create a new note. And this time I want to add a voice memo to my note. So watch this on the left side, tap on the plus in the left side and tap on recording. Now, when you tap recording, you can actually create a voice recording. So maybe you want to jot down some thoughts you have on something, but you don't really want to type them all out because that would be a lot. No problem. Just hit recording. It's going to ask you for permission to use the microphone and then you're going to start talking. Okay. Today I want to go for a walk. I want to go to the store. And I also want to call my best friend. Okay. So guess what? That's my note. And the cool thing is not only will it type out everything you say, it'll also save the voice recording of what you said as well that you can play back whenever you want. Okay. Today I want to. All right. The last thing I would do is I would title that note and I would just say my thoughts. Or, um, yeah, we can just call it my thoughts and just put today's date. There we go. Okay. And then I can just back right out of this note and guess what? I haven't pinned that note, so I'm not going to see it at the top, but I'm going to swipe up now. And here is my thoughts. I can always go back to later, listen to it, or I can see exactly what transcribed from my notes. So. This is uh, a great note app. If you hit the home button and you swipe up, you'll find the Google keep app right in your app drawer. All right. If that was helpful, don't forget, bump that like button. Now really quickly, before I move on to the next section, I just wanted to give a quick plug to mint mobile. This is a new service I've been using for my phone and um, I basically just switched and I've been saving money on my phone bill. Now I am a partner with Mint Mobile and super excited to just share about this service because it's a low cost option that uh, works really well. It actually runs on the nation's largest 5G network. They have plans starting at just $15 a month and it only takes you about 15 minutes to switch to their service. So if you want to save money on your phone bill, if your bill is too high right now, hit the link in the description to sign up for their service and save some money on your bill. All right. Now let's move to the next section and we're going to talk about using email. Now I'm going to be showing this using the Gmail app. Gmail again is going to be the primary app that comes installed on this phone. And this is the app that most people will end up using for their phone. So this is the one I'll be using 
to uh, just demonstrate some basic things. So we are in the Gmail app right now. And as I swipe up, I can see all the emails that have come through in chronological order. So any new emails will always start at the top. And as you go lower, you'll get to see your older emails. Now, guess what? Some of the emails in here are um, like spam or like junk mail. And they're things that I don't even want to open because I already know it's just an advertisement. So all you have to do is you can swipe to the right and that is going to archive that email. It's going to take it right off of your inbox. So right now I can just simply start swiping through to remove any of these emails that I know are just advertisements. It's an easy way to simply get rid of the trash. Another way to do this is I can tap on the little icon right next to the email and I can just simply select. Okay. And I can do it this way. Maybe you want to pick these emails and I want to delete all these at one time. I'm going to go to the upper right corner and tap on the trash can and I'm going to just delete them. Now you're probably saying, what is the difference between archiving and deleting? Archiving saves the emails in a separate section that is called archived emails. Whereas when you delete it, it actually moves to the trash and your trash is emptied every 30 days. So, um, Sometimes I'll archive something that is not important, but I may decide later I want to look up. But if it's absolute trash and I'm never going to open it, I just simply delete it. So starting with that. Now, maybe you want to read this Google Pixel email. Guess what? I'm going to tap on it so I can open it and I can read it. And here I can see, okay, I'm going to read through. Here is my email. This is great. Now, Let's say this was an email from someone that you knew and you wanted to respond to this email. At the very top of the email, you'll see a little arrow pointing to the left. This is your reply email. You're gonna tap on that arrow. It's gonna open up a new email and give you some room to start typing. So you can say, hey, great deal. Now, obviously, uh, in this case, I'm sending it to someone that's not a real person. But if it was a real person, you would simply just type what you want to type. And then you would come to the upper right corner and tap on this little send button, not the paper clip. The paper clip you would be using if you wanted to attach a picture to the email. And just to show you, if I tap on the paper clip, I can now attach a file. So maybe I wanted to send uh, a picture or a document. You will simply hit attach and that would allow you to take a picture or document on your phone, attach it to the email before you send it off. Now this button is the send button. So tapping on this will send my reply to that person. Now, before I hit that button, I want to also show you the three dots all the way to the right. If you tap on that, you can discard it. Maybe you change your mind. You don't want to send it. No problem. You can just simply discard it, delete it. You can put it into confidential mode, which honestly I don't use too much. So I can't really explain what that is. You can add a contact. So uh, maybe you can add someone else that you want this email to go to, or you can do what's called a schedule send, which is you can say, Hey, I want to send this email but I want to specifically send it to this person tomorrow morning because I'm sending it late at night. Here you can assign when the email actually will be sent to that person. When you're done, simply hit this button, which is your send button. And that's how you send off that email. And that's it. That's how you respond to an email um, and kind of all the options that are going to appear. Now in the upper left corner, I can hit my uh, back arrow here, or I can use my back arrow in the bottom right corner like this to get back to my page to keep looking at my emails. You also have a compose button in the bottom right corner and tapping on this will allow you to open up a fresh email and then you can say, Hey, okay, let me hit the two section and type in who I want to send the email to. So I can do Joe at Gmail. And then I'm going to add the recipient. I'm going to hit a subject. Good morning. 
And then I want to come down to compose email and actually type the email. Have a great day, Joe. And from there, I'm going to come up to the upper right corner, tap on the little send button, and I'm going to send off that email. And that's how you send a basic email using the Gmail app. Now, the last thing I want to show you is in the upper left corner, you'll have this is called a menu button or a hamburger menu because it's three lines stacked like a hamburger. Tap on the menu. Here you'll be able to access the other folders in Gmail. So what Gmail does, Gmail is a smart inbox. And so it will sift through the emails and it will pull things that um, are promotional which it basically tries to find things that are like spam. So this is like a list of all the emails that have come through that are just spam. It also has a social section. So things that are from YouTube or things that are from like Facebook might get moved over into this section. So just as an FYI, you'll want to check that as well to look at your other emails. And here are a bunch of other categories you can look through as well. You can also go to all mail and this will show you every single email that has come through. It's not going to try to filter out like the spam. It's going to show you every single email. So just keep that in mind. The all, all inbox is a great option. If someone has told you, Hey, I sent you an email. How come you didn't get it? And they say, Oh, you did. I never got anything. You'll want to go to menu and go to all mail. And this way you can see, if maybe that email was pulled and flagged as a promotional email or as spam. All right. So that was our quick rundown of how to use the Gmail app to use your emails. Okay. Let's talk about how to get this screen to stop dimming so quickly. So if you notice again, if I go too long without touching the screen, the screen is going to go dim. It's, it can be frustrating when you're trying to read something on the phone and you don't need to touch the phone so often. So just like right now, what it's doing. So hit the home button, swipe down upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel. We're going to swipe up and go to display and then swipe up and go to screen timeout. And we're going to change this to five minutes. That way the screen will just stay on and it won't go dim until unless five minutes goes by without you touching the screen. So that's just a quick note to help keep your screen on longer. Now let's move on to how to set an alarm. This is super easy and this will be a short section. We're going to swipe up and we're going to find the clock icon right here. And in this section, you have four different um, things you can control. So alarms, world clock, see your stopwatch and a timer. If you go to alarm and you hit the plus here, we can create a new alarm. You can say, Hey, I'd love to wake up at 6 AM on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now, when I select multiple days, guess what? I'm setting a reoccurring alarm. And so this is going to basically set for, this is going to reoccur every single week. So keep that in mind. Some of you guys may be just trying to set an alarm for one day. So I'll show you how to do that next, but this is how to set a reoccurring alarm. And you can say, Hey, I want to wake up every day at 6 AM. I'm going to select the days. I want this alarm to go off. I'm going to select the sound. You're going to tap ringtone and allow, and you can go through a list of some of the options that are available. Let's pick that one. That's a really easy one. Next, I want to name my alarm and you can say, you know, morning reading or morning walk, whatever you want it to say, just type morning read and then hit save. And guess what? This is my alarm right here. Now, if you want to edit that alarm later, maybe you decide, am I crazy? Why do I want to wake up at 6 AM? No problem. Tap on the alarm and simply change the time by scrolling up. I'm going to scroll up to 30, 630. That's a little bit better. I'm going to hit save. 
and now I've just edited my alarm. Now, maybe you want to just set a one-off alarm. You're going to hit the plus again. You're going to set the time. Let's say you want to wake up at 8 and basically don't select any of the days of the week here. Just set the time and just save it. If you don't mess with any of the other settings, this will become a one-off alarm. And so, hey, tomorrow, it's always going to default to tomorrow. I'm going to, it's going to go off at 8 a.m. I'm going to save it. And guess what? There is my alarm. Tomorrow, 8 a.m., my phone is going to go off. So, that is how to set alarms on your phone. Now, when the alarm goes off, uh, you'll have some pop-ups on the screen. You'll need to just swipe away those pop-ups when they come up to turn the phone off. Keep in mind, you will see a button for snooze, and if you snooze it, it's gonna come back on again. So you have to decide, if you snooze it, the, the alarm is gonna ask you again in five minutes, hey, do you want to, it's gonna go off every five minutes until you actually say turn off. Now, one more little trick and to me, this is so fun if you choose to use it. If you want to set an alarm in the easiest way possible, use your Google Assistant. All you have to do is hold down on your home button for one second and just say, set an alarm, say the time, and that's it. Just like this. Set an alarm for tomorrow at 8 a.m. You got it. Your alarm set for tomorrow at 8 a.m. And it's just that easy. That's it. So this is a third way to set an alarm by using your Google Assistant. Now, let's move on to how to set calendar appointments. Now, if you swipe up from the home screen, go to your Google folder. Some of you will have a Google Calendar app on your phone. And as I'm checking the folder here, I'm seeing that, guess what? I don't have that app on the phone right now, but it's Samsung phone. It will have the Samsung calendar, which will be right here. Now, here we can see all of our appointments, and I don't have any right now. But if I wanted to set an appointment, I'm simply going to tap on this plus in the bottom right corner. And here I can input all the information for a calendar appointment. And you can say, you know, let's just call this doctor visit. And you're going to tap on the date. Now don't tap on the date on the right, always tap the first date that you see. And I'm gonna set it for the 30th. I'm gonna hit save. Oh, actually I shouldn't have done that. Okay, let's tap on the 30th. So if you just, if you did what I just did and you started creating your appointment and then you messed up, here's how you edit it after. So I'm gonna to go to that day, November 30th. I'm gonna tap on that day on the calendar Here's my appointment. I'm gonna tap on the appointment. And then I'm gonna tap on the edit button at the bottom of the screen here. So after you basically set the day, you'll simply need to just move to the next option. Don't save it until you're completely done with the appointment. Now next, I wanna say, hey, what time is the appointment? Well, this appointment is gonna be at 12 noon, okay? And this appointment should be over at 12.30, okay? Next, I wanna set a location. Now here you can actually type in an address and you can save the address. And the reason you'll wanna do that is because then when it's time for you to go to the appointment, when the calendar appointment pops up, if you tap on the address you've put in, it should open Google Maps and basically give you directions on how to get to that hospital. So that's a really easy way to do that. And then you can say, hey, notify me one hour before the appointment, 10 minutes before, one day before. Now, I normally like to set multiple alerts. So guess what? The day before I'm gonna get alerted, an hour before I'm gonna get alerted. Um, depending on how far away it is, you may want to change this. You can tap on one hour, or excuse me, you can go to custom and you can say, hey, alert me, let's see, let's go three hours before the appointment and then hit your back button here and now you'll have this option as well. 
So those are gonna be my alerts. So I have my date, my time, my location, the notifications and when I'm gonna be alerted. And you can also add any important notes as well into your calendar appointment. You can do invites. Under the invite section, you can invite someone using their email address. Maybe you wanna send an alert to your daughter or a friend that maybe is supposed to go with you to the appointment. You tap on invites, and here you need to type in the person's email address. If you have them saved in your phone, you would tap on contacts, and then you could search the person's name and find their email that way. The easiest way usually is to simply type in the person's email address. When you're done, hit save. And now here's my calendar appointment, doctor visit at 12 noon. Now, there is an easier way. We can use our Google Assistant as well to launch this, watch this. Set a calendar appointment for November 30th at 3 p.m. This will be a doctor follow-up visit. Got it. This will be a doctor follow-up visit on November 30th from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Do you want to save that? Yes. Sure. I added it. So this is a shortcut on how to create an appointment. Now you'll notice it won't have all the information, but it'll have some of the information. And so this is another easy way to create a calendar appointment. All right. Now let's move on to how to set up your voicemail on your phone. I know many of you were asking that in the comments of the last video. So uh, let me show you the rough process. Now I say rough because I don't currently have service on this particular phone. I have it on a different phone, but the process will be the same for your phone. Tap on the green phone button. Now this is sort of a universal thing across all phones. Number one, if you hold down on the one, it takes you right to the voicemail section of the phone. And if you've never set up your voicemail before, all you have to do is hold down on the one like this, and it will trigger you to go right to the voicemail setting. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do this on a different phone, and I'm only showing you this because the process is exactly the same for all phones, again, so this phone has service, and so I want to show you on this phone. Okay, so I'm on the, in the phone app, and you'll notice right under the one is a voicemail symbol, because again, this is a universal thing across phones. I'm going to hold down on the one. It takes you right to voicemail. Voicemail service. I will be helping you set up your voicemail in three easy steps. Creating a password, recording your name, and creating a greeting. So that is all you need to know in regards to setting up voicemail. It is simply a matter of uh, holding down on the one to get to the voicemail setting. And the first time you go there, it should ask you to set a password. Now, if your phone, when you go to the voicemail setting, if it's asking you for a password and you don't know it, one thing to try is the last four digits of your phone number. So try the last four digits. On most carriers, that is a default uh, for your initial password. And if that doesn't work, you'll want to dial 611 on your phone and that will allow you to connect to customer support for your carrier. And then you can say, can you please help me set my voicemail password? I've never done this before and I'd like to use my voicemail. And in that case, they will walk you through how to set up your voicemail. Okay, so for the very last section, I wanna show you how to pair a Bluetooth speaker to your Samsung Galaxy A14. And to do this, I'll be using a really awesome speaker from Tribit, Tribit. Um, this is the Stormbox Micro 2 speaker, and if you're in the market for a Bluetooth speaker, this is a great one, and you'll find one in my little YouTube shopping cart right here, along with some other really great accessories like screen protectors, cases, chargers for your phone, stands, so hit that little um, button right here to get to the shopping cart, and that's where you can find all these great items to go with your phone. Now, to pair a Bluetooth speaker, You'll want to swipe down from the top of the screen. 
make sure that this um, this icon here, sorry, this third icon is your Bluetooth icon. You'll want to make sure it's lit up in blue. And just to show you, just by tapping it one time, it'll blur it out and that turns off the Bluetooth. If you want to turn it back on, you're going to tap on that icon and this will automatically bring you to your Bluetooth shortcut menu. Now, okay, so I'm going to turn on my speaker and to turn it on, all I'm doing is holding down the power button one time. And then on my phone here, I'm going to tap the scan button and it's going to begin to look for this Bluetooth speaker. Now, what I might need to do also is tap on the Bluetooth icon and depending on what speaker you have, um, sometimes just turning the speaker on will put it in pairing mode, but other times you'll need to actually press another button to initiate the pairing. So for this speaker, I'm going to hold the button for one second. This is what puts it in the pairing mode and then I'm going to scan again on the phone. And now here is my pop-up, the Tribit Stormbox Micro 2. I'm going to tap on that. I'm going to tap pair. And you'll know that it's paired because you'll see it show up here. It says it's going to show up in blue and it says it's connected. Now I can use this speaker with the phone. Now guess what? If a call comes through, I can hear it on here. If I want to listen to a movie or music, it's all going to come through here. And I can use the volume keys here to control the volume. So that's how you pair a Bluetooth speaker. And once again, this is a really great option here. This one's only $49.99, and you'll find it in my little shopping cart right here. If you're looking for something a little bit bigger with a little more punch, this is the regular Stormbox speaker. This one is actually $70, and the difference in the two is that this has an eight hour battery, and this has a 20 hour battery, so you can take it out longer. Um, it's just a little bit bigger. So, you know, if you like one or the other, you'll find them both in my shopping cart right here. And this takes us to the end of our video. I hope you guys found this helpful. I would love to continue to make videos on this phone. So do me a favor, hit the like button down below. That's how you can let me know this video was helpful. And leave me a comment and let me know what other things you would like me to cover in this video series. And I will continue to support you guys with content, educating you on how to use this phone. As a reminder, you'll find a link below in the description for my Mint Mobile partner link if you'd like to try out their service and save some money on your phone bill um, check out that link below it's a great great deal and the pricing is very aggressive it's probably some of the most aggressive pricing i've seen um, from all the carriers out there and again they run on uh, a really amazing 5g network so anyway guys thanks again for watching take care and as always have a good one